Okay, there are a couple of things I want to do just to make the scene look a bit better. Because at the moment, if we render it out, we can see that the light is a bit too strong on the smoke. And also, the background is black. Now we could just add an, a mix node and change it to add. And that would work pretty well. But it always looks better if you just make it transparent and use an alpha over node. If you have no idea what that is, watch my um, watch my other tutorial. The best one for that would probably be the um, teleportation tutorial. Otherwise, you can just listen in, and I'll try and explain as best I can. If I go to Render Settings, Layer, Sky, that makes everything transparent. And I'm going to select the lights then. And I'm going to bring down the energy to make it 5.5. I found that value works the best. So now if I render it out, as you can see, the background is transparent. But the only other thing is that it's quite dark here due to lack of background light. So that's quite simple fix. I'm going to duplicate this view, or this light, and I'm going to rotate it in the opposite direction. Then, on from uh, top view, I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. From there, I'll just change the energy to be quite low, 0.5, because this is only a backlight. It's not an actual main light. Now I render it out and it looks a lot better. Great. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing for the chunks and droplets. I'm going to turn off sky and turn off sky. I'll just render these out both quickly on frame 111 or yeah. So they're all on the same frame. I could do this later on in the compositing scene we're going to create. Or I could just do it now. It doesn't really matter. Hmm. What happened there? I'm just going to refresh the cache. Great. Okay. Brilliant. So now it's time to add our new scene. I'm going to copy settings and call this scene compositing. Since it is this scene we're going to use for compositing. And I'm going to switch to the node editor, not the logic editor, the node editor. I'll click use nodes, uh, backdrop, and auto render. Great. Now I'm going to duplicate this render layer twice. So now we have three of them. This means that we can um, have one for each scene that we're rendering out. One for droplets, one for chunks, and one for mist. And they're all already rendered out, which is great. The only other thing we need is the actual video. So if I press Shift A, go to Input, I'm going to add an, add an image input node, and select the lovely clip that I made. I know already it's 200 frames long, so I'll add that in. And also turn on Auto Refresh, so as you may have guessed, it refreshes automatically. Now, the reason I turned on backdrop is so if I add an output viewer node and plug this in, I can see results immediately. And the composite node isn't really needed at the moment, which is great. Now, we are going to add the alpha over node 
which I was talking about earlier. And all this does is it gets the transparency value and sticks everything that isn't transparent on top. It just layers it on top. And that's perfect. The other way you may have done this is with the add node, which is mix, and just change that to add and drop that on top. But as you can see, it is kind, it is slightly uh, transparent, and that's why I'm not going with that option. This one is completely solid. Okay, so the next part is to make it look a bit better. I'm going to add both a blur node, which is under filter blur. If I can get in, here we go. And change it to fast Gaussian. And just bump it up to two or something like so, even one for X and two for Y, or three, whichever one you want. It just makes it blurry, as you may have guessed. And then I'll add in something to change the color a bit and not make it bright red. Hue saturation value. And I'm going to bring down the value really low. Not too low, but pretty low. That's close enough. And you can also mess with the saturation if you want. Make it gray or make it really bright, which I actually kind of like. But for this case, I'll just make it a bit below what it should be. A uh, bit below one. Great. OK, that's looking fine. The next part is adding the chunks, which is pretty similar. We are once again going to add a blur node. We are once again going to add a hue saturation value node. And we are once again going to add an alpha over node. The only difference this time, you'll see in a second, is first of all we're going to make the value even lower actually I'm just going to swap these around uh, just so the small, smaller droplets are on top because it makes a bit more sense We are going to change the Y value to 2 and the X value to 2. The big difference in this scene is we are actually going to add motion blur. Because for the droplets it doesn't really matter because they're all going in the direction of their um, velocity. But for the, dro uh, for the chunks, they're balls. So they need to have some sort of little bit of motion blur to make them look a bit better. And the best way to do that is with a vector blur node, which is under filter, vector blur. Here we go. Now, we will need to render the scene out again. Plug the Z into here. Now, there isn't any option for speed at the moment. And the way we're going to do this is if we go back to chunks, scene, we can... Uh, go back to 3D, well, actually we don't need to. There are two ways of doing um, motion blur in Blender, as far as I know anyway. You can go to the camera settings and you can turn on sampled motion blur, which personally I don't think looks very good and it takes a lot more time. What you do is you render out the scene along with a couple of extra subframes in between and blur between the different subframes so that it looks as if there's um yeah so it, it looks as if 
there's uh, motion blur, but it's actually loads of ghost images uh, merged together. The other way you can do it is with the actual nodes there, as I'm showing. You must go under uh, Render, and under Passes, turn on Vector. And this will keep track of the ve velocity of the image. If we go back to compositing now, the plug-in speed, it's not going to make any difference yet. Because we need to actually render this out. Render it out again. And there we go. Now you see what it looks like. It's not great at the moment. It's uh, The blur is a bit too strong. I think 0.5 fits it pretty well. And samples, you're more than welcome to turn up. And it doesn't really cost your machine that much, which surprised me. Though 36 is really all you need to make it look good, especially for such, such, a, such a short scene. But I'll go with 60. Because I can. Ha. Ha ha. Just looking at it now, I definitely think this value here should be darker. Not black either. There we go. Now, at the moment, the scene still doesn't look great. It doesn't look that uh, realistic. Partly because you need to actually go through the entire thing and watch it and then it'll look a lot better. And partly because we don't have the mist. The mist actually helps so much. So once again, I'm going to add the alpha over node. Plug this in here. And I'll turn on convert pre-multiplied. There is a difference. It's not that noticeable, but there is a difference. I think it looks better. The other thing I'm going to do is add a color balance node to color it right. And I'll color that in a second. The only other thing I want to do is bring this value down to about half so it's not completely impossible to see what's happening. You could even bring this lower, but that's okay. Now, just mess around. The um, brightest colors are the gain, the darkest colors are the lift, and everything in between seems to be gamma, or something of the sort. If you make it all red and dark, it works pretty well. There we go, now you can really see it. It's too strong. Not strong enough. Too strong. That's pretty good. Great. And that is really, that's, it's really that simple. Everything else is absolutely fine. So um, let's render this out and see how it looks in the end.